Yeah, welcome back. We're taking our last topic for today, and that is the fact that there was a protest yesterday by NLC, TUC, and uh, civil societies. And uh, um, we hear that the protesters pulled down the National Assembly gate and took over the premises. Mr. Shegun Shokweton is here with us. He's a principal partner, Wood Region Scott Consulting. Um, he will be Oh, he has joined us. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Shokwetson. Okay. Well, they, yeah, the protest happened. Some people said it was not going to happen, but it happened. And uh, there was a, a weird way of occupying the National Assembly yesterday because the gate was pulled down of the National Assembly and the premises was flooded by the protesters and all that. What do you even feel about the protest in its own self and uh, possibly um, the outcome of it since yesterday? Um, okay. Well, I think that the, the protest in itself um, uh, is, is an important, is my view, you know, is, is an important part of the uh, uh, governance message, um, like um, of any country. You know, it's important that government is it is important for citizens and it's important that they are good to each of us um, uh, with regard to in the country, with regard to um, how things are going, how they're feeling about what is happening. You know, the feedback mechanism is good. So, in that, from, from that goal, that was a good thing. People came out, uh, the very box of the credit, um, this, this, this process, the help of Nigerian people. And, you know, uh, it went ahead at the uh, and uh, at the first chair in the first of that government, I think it was a big um, uh, if, if you if, if, if things are happening in a country of territory and no uh, no feedback, and even the government itself would struggle to to assess how it's doing and how the people are feeling about how, how the things that they're doing and how things the people they're doing them are for. Okay, um, the, the, the protest was a, a, a success, a huge success, if you, if you consider how people felt it may turn out to be. Uh, some people started calling the NLC toothless bull, bulldog and, also, and all that, and uh, they were able to collaborate with uh, civil society organizations, part of which you are, and all that. So I'd like to know, labor demands are... Uh, are glaring. They are asking for 200,000 naira minimum wage. They are asking for so many other things. But the collaboration between them and the CSOs was really great. Are you also demanding for the same things as labor, or your demands are a little bit different? Okay, so so important to clarify for the sake of our viewers <laughs> that I speak this is maybe um, on this. Not as um, in my professional part of art, as um, a leader in the civil society um, uh, space, um, as the chairman of the uh, Accountability Center and Transparency Network. Um, and we are a member of um, an organization known as the Labor Civil Society Front. Um, and that organization is, is a coalition of uh, various civil society organizations. Um, and labor movement consisting of uh, the labor, Nigeria Labor Congress, uh, the State Union Congress, and the number of other unions. Um, so, so, having provided that context, just of clarity, um, yes, the, the civil society 
demand uh, from government um, were largely aligned with the demand of labor. I think, you know, the areas of focus might, might be slightly different. For example, our civil society, um, the issue of minimum wage may not necessarily be um, top on our agenda, not because we don't think that's important, but because the minimum wage in itself affects only um, directly affects only people that work for government, government work as civil servants, members of the labor uh, union, various unions, um, people that work in organized private sector, people that, that are in the informal sector who are who represent in fact the, the, the dominant number of workers in Nigeria uh, will not be directly affected by any movement in minimum wage. Um, so the things that civil society um, are looking at will be wider, you know, than the concept of minimum wage, just using that as an example. But that's not to say that we are not in support of the minimum wage conversation because it's all a part of um, the entire matrix, you know, of, um, uh, variable as, as far as uh, the impact of um, all of these policies, the different policies uh, would have on the economy. Um, so, so as civil society, uh, we're, we're expecting to hear from government as uh, to get to their plan on how to assuage the negative, the deeply negative impact of many of the policies that the government has been rolling out in the last few months uh, on, on, on Nigerian citizens. Uh, to know, you know, as a member of the media, know the, the, what has been happening. In Nigeria society with regards to cost of living, standard of living, um, inflation, um, disposable income, all of those things have been working. And for us, the conversation is about what to do, what the government can do in the immediate to ensure that you know, the impact of all of these things are at the right. Okay, uh, well, uh, what we're really talking about now is the fact that in in trying to uh, drive home their um, demands, the National Assembly gate was crashed as it is. Um, will that reduce the efficacy of what they did? Will that reduce the, the genuineness of what they did? Because it was supposed to be a peaceful protest, but now that the gate has been crashed, will that minus anything from what the protest was all about? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that question. Are you talking about the gate that, that was brought down in Abuja? The gate that was brought down, yes, in Abuja. Will it minus uh, anything from the protest itself? No, 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 not at all. I, I think that was collateral damage. <laughs> I think it was um, a minor blip um, in, in the entire protest. The, the, the message itself was that um, labor went to the National Assembly to Able their grouses and they were able to get uh, you know, that little incident, the little starter at the beginning of this all was unfortunate, uh, avoidable, completely uh, unnecessary, um, but it happened. And you know, uh, you want also have to recognize when you have a large number of people coming together um, uh, in unison behind one call. It is difficult to stop them. And if you are in authority and you think that by erecting one small wall, uh, you can prevent them access to you, it might not work. So, so that, for me, that was a figurative thing. And it happened. I don't know if it was good or bad. It happened. Um, I don't think it has any bearing whatsoever on. You know, the, the conversation, the engagement, of course, the engagement happened subsequently. Um, you know, the man we are table, meetings were subsequently held with the president, between the president of the country and the leader of the labor. So, was that incident really didn't um, affect things in a little bit in the way? I'm not sure if it's uh, something that needs to be given you uh, too much. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. 
uh, just to wrap up, um, labor and the CSOs, they are all organized uh, groups. Uh, but the people of Nigeria, if they also feel this impact, might also have a role to play. What do you think that role should be like, and how do they go about it? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an excellent question. I, I think that it's important that there's only so much that the labor movement itself can do. There's only so much that the civil society organizations, even when they, even if they come together and form um, a one large uh, party, there's only so much they can do. Or at the end of the day, all of these engagements are about Nigerian people. And the Nigerian people have a huge role to play in ensuring that these people that are speaking on their behalf succeed, you know, in, 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 the, in the quest to get the government uh, to, to act in a way that is in the best interest of the majority. They have a huge role to play. And what that role is for me, one, the first thing that Nigerians need to understand is we have to if, if we keep quiet, if we do nothing, then you know the people in government will just think about their memory and do whatever they think is is best. Um, that feedback message is absolutely critical and we must provide it now. How? Uh, the Nigerian Labour Congress for the process is today. Um, well, you know, the agenda was not too bad, but it would have been much better. A lot of people simply went about their business. Men went about their merry way. Um, and, and for me, that's really, that, we have to do better than that. We have to show more interest. Regardless of being on the lapping, of on the current of disenchantment, on the current of distrust and distrust between the ones. All of those things must take a back Even the national conversation, we have to put it behind us and step forward and talk. So, um, now, apart from the process, we have social media. And one of the things that I've seen in social media in the last five years is that on social media, when Nigerians unite in the court, government always listen. Always. And they always do the business of the day. So, we need to be a bit more vocal than the country. We need to be united. We need to get more trending. You know, just speak. Just Speak your feet. When you speak your feet and speak your truth, it will coalesce, become a sport, become a movement, become a theory, and then it will trend and it will get attention of the school and authority. So I think for me, the, the answer to your question is I don't need to be um, deliberate about speaking out openly on all channels available to them about how they feel, mm -hmm. that is how the uh, country will be not. Okay, being deliberate about uh, speaking out and speaking the truth, you know. Everybody can speak truth to power using the available means uh, to them, if it is social media or you have the listening ear of one of the representatives in the state or national assembly or anywhere, you talk to them. And like you said, whenever Nigerians are united in talking about a thing, the government always listens. So this is the time to unite. As united as we unite to watch the uh, Falcons do what they do, or any of our national teams do what they do, or even watch one of our sons um, uh, take on another person in the boxing ring and all that. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Shegun Shokpaton, for coming on the program and sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Thank you. All the pleasure. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Shegun Shokpaton, Principal Partner, Woodridge and Scott Consulting. Uh, he uh, was talking to us about what the NLC did yesterday and uh, what the possible outcome might be and what we need to do as individuals also uh, in this, uh, in this our country, if we wanted to get to the El Dorado, we want it. At this point, our hearts go to the family of Mrs. Elizabeth Nabu, who lost her husband yesterday because of the failure in the health system. No ICU in most of the hospitals, and the one that had uh, was charging five million naira just to admit an accident victim. And we condole also the family of Dr. Vuare Diaso, who died needlessly because of neglect, corruption in an elevator that had no business being the way it was in a hospital. May the souls of these and all the other who died avoidable deaths rest in peace. And now we take the quote for the day. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. 
That is according to Winston Churchill. And that's how we wrap it up on the show today. We do hope that you will have a wonderful Thursday. And when tomorrow does come, you can say thank God is Friday. Let's do it again tomorrow. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. On behalf of the entire team, saying thanks for being there.